The year is 2006. Evander Holyfield is at the lowest point of his career, following three back-to-back -back losses, with James Toney being one of them in his second and last ever knockout loss. Wanting to regain some ground on his ever-slipping status as a top current fighter of the sport, the real deal finds himself tackling journeyman Jeremy Bates. Does Holyfield have what it takes to dismantle the beast Bates? Or will this underdog have what it takes to well and truly bury any chance of a comeback from Evander? Welcome back to Boxing After Dark. Tonight, we're peering in on Holyfield's final era, where it seemed he could still unearth the man who had destroyed so many professional careers, rather than the shell of himself that he'd become soon after. And an analysis of a boxer who turned professional wrestler with a heart of stone and a hook of steel. Let's get into it. Evander Holyfield, master, menace, maniac in the ring. He was a man who turned all-time great careers upside down over the course of an hour like it was a trip to the store. And with no excuses, after a loss to Ruiz in their rematch and a draw in his next two fights, a downward spiral would begin. Evander lost to Chris Boyd and soon after would fight the defensive master James Toney, getting knocked out brutally. It seemed Evander's time in the ring truly was up, but you never can count such a great out despite now being 43. Jeremy Bates, meanwhile, was not a household name by any stretch of the imagination. With a record of 21 and 11, it was clear that the guy was no future world champion. He said, yeah, Evander Holyfield's making a comeback. Would you be interested? I said, what are they paying? He told me what they're paying, and I said, Tell him I'll take half. The odds were stacked against Bates from the start, to no one's surprise. But with that, Bates' gentle giant persona was refreshing and respectable. Fight night arrived on the 18th of August 2006, and as the crowd cheered for a spectacular comeback from Evander Holyfield, the two made their way to the ring. For months, you know, uh, people would call me every single day and say, man, that, that's got to be such an honor, you know, to be able to go in there and fight your hero. Man, you are so lucky. You're the luckiest guy in the world. I kept hearing how lucky I was, how lucky I was. And when, you know, when after the announcements made, you know, everybody's out of the ring, and it's just the referee, and I'm looking across the ring, and there's a Vander Holyfield looking at me. He is a mean looking guy, man. And that thought runs in my head, you are so lucky. And I thought, screw them, man. <laughs> they don't know what I'm looking at. Fourth round on. Here we go in a round one. Jeremy Bates said he would go right after Evander Holyfield. Let's see if that's the case. In some of his recent fights that were losses prior to his layoff, he did have good first rounds against opponents. In fact, one of them was Tony. He had an outstanding first round against Tony that way. And the crowd already beginning oh, a Holyfield yeah. chant. Spurs you. It, it just bounced in his step. Holyfield. He's never been in this kind of national spotlight before. Tried to sneak that right in again on Holyfield. Know, Left jab. It sure is. Look at the bounce. Look at the loose punches from Holyfield. Also trying to put the combinations together. Evander moving around the ring. Looks very mobile, at least here in round one. Now this wrestling. Holyfield back to the jab once again. It seemed like earlier when he started to jab, he started to build a rhythm off of that, unloaded the combination, and here you see it come right again. That seems to be the key for Evander to get started. Good left hook from Evander. Oh, strong right hand by Holyfield. First real hard punch of the fight. And Bates comes in and has to hang on a bit. He, oh, he felt that one. He rocks back a little bit on his legs. I'm watching those legs, and they're a little bit wobbly right now. But in the last 10 seconds of the round, and Holyfield trying to pour it on. Bates is going to need to punch back. He's not punching back. Ramos is looking at him, and they, the bell sounds. He did not stop the fight. I thought Rafael Ramos was going to jump in and stop the fight any uh, moment. I believe he was thinking about it. In the last 30 seconds, Holyfield lets his hands go by, starting with a cracking body shot, followed by a swift yet powerful one-two to the face, and then dominates him against the ropes for the remainder of the round. All right, they want Jeremy Bates to work a jab, but his problem was he, would, he couldn't reach Holyfield with the jab in the first round. That was a great rally by Holyfield at the end of round number one. He definitely had Bates hurt and ready to go, and I thought that Ramos was thinking about stopping the fight. Holyfield thinks he's going to come out and take you out. Which is a good sign for Evander because in recent fights he was throwing just the one punch at a time, and that's not enough. Good right hand, that hurt Bates. Some of his previous fights, but then that. Let's see if he can keep up the attack. The right side of the face of Bates is, it is real red from those left hooks. Oh, there's a nice combination from Holyfield. If he wanted 
one-handed, he'd come back with a right hand. He's been fighting at the upper left. Good right hand for Bates, and that drives Holyfield to the ropes. And Holyfield actually has to hold on. Bates landed his best punch of right hand. He's trying. And he tries to come over the top again with it. Bates a street fighter. He's a brawler. He's been manhandled or tried to be manhandled in the past. He knows how to handle it. Bates' legs betraying him a little. Nice right hand. Good combination from Holyfield. Another good combination. Each one a three-punch combination. Now Evander trying to unload if he's near the end of the round. Can Bates survive the round? 15 seconds to go. Holyfield pouring it on. Ramos is watching it closely. Bates better throw something back. It's all right. The referee stops the fight. It's all over. Evander Holyfield has returned to the ring with a two-round knockout of Jeremy Bates. And believe me, he threw a lot of punches in two rounds. Jeremy and Evander embrace after such admirable performances from both men as the results are revealed. In the post-fight interview, Holyfield breaks down his game plan throughout the fight and how things unraveled as expected. I was able to do the things that I ain't been able to do in about five years. I, I was able to slip punches. I was able to use my foot speed. I was able to go in and out. But when I had to injure, I wasn't able to do that, so I was just standing target. Bates' friendly demeanor shines as he stands among Evander and proclaims it an honor to have shared the ring with the real deal himself. A lot of these top 10 guys that I've fought before give me a week, and Evander give me eight weeks. He's got a lot of class, and he's a true champion. Oh, yeah, very I wish classy. Him the best. You're right, very classy. After this comeback fight for the real deal, he would fight whoever was necessary to ensure he got another shot at the title to become a five-time heavyweight champion. Eventually, his prayers would be answered, with his opponent being the WBO champion Sultan Ibragimov. Sadly, Holyfield's victory was not meant to be, as he lost comfortably on all three scorecards. Evander would try once more for a title in his return fight against the beast from the east, Nikolai Valuev. By this time, there was no doubt Holyfield was not the same fighter he once had been. As many hoped for retirement after the bout, Holyfield conceded that he was finally too old after knocking out both Francois Botha and former IBO heavyweight champion Brian Nielsen over the course of a year. Evander Holyfield would never recapture the beauty he'd once displayed in the ring throughout the 80s and 90s, but despite having an underwhelming-looking record of 44-10 and 10 by his career's end, there's no doubt that he has some of the greatest victories in boxing history and holds multiple achievements that modern boxers still haven't come close to reclaiming for their own.